Hey everyone, welcome back to this edition of the navbar header tutorial where we create a menu like this. And we're going to jump right into it because there's a lot to cover in the next 15 minutes. So let's create a group with a width of 110 and a height of 60 and a Y of zero. And let's go ahead and drag that out until it reaches the right hand side of your navbar. Now we want to style it just like we styled these buttons. And something that can really help is to create a style based on the style that you've already built out for this group. And we're going to call this header button. And now we can actually go into this group and apply the same style. And it's going to give it the same conditionals properties uh, defined by header button in the styles. And it's going to get rid of all the styling options that we used to have because they are now um, regulated in the style tab. And I'm going to show it to you really quickly. Style tab. If you search by element type and grab group, uh, well, you're going to see a new style called header button, which has the conditionals, the transitions, and the appearance um, that you've set up. And it actually quickens loading time because instead of having to load this style and then this style and then this style, it loads one style and applies it to all three buttons at the same time. So as much as possible, do use styles. So now this group F is going to be our menu and we're going to add two quick things. We're going to add an image first of all. Let's go ahead and drag it out. Let's make it a width of let's say 35 by a height of 35. Let's give it an X of, let's say 20, and let's center it vertically as well. And then let's upload just something that I have uh, quickly. Eventually, I'm going to show you how to make this the user's profile picture, but for now, we're good. Uh, Bubble comes built with built-in icons, but I find they're a little bit restrictive and sometimes a bit cartoony. So we're going to go ahead and into plugins. This comes preloaded on all my apps because I do install it on every single one of my apps. It's just a better element um, thing. And you're going to learn how to install plugins really easily. So you can just go to, let me uninstall this. This is what your screen should look like. And you click on the add plugins button, and then you type in Ionic, and then you install Ionic. Easy as that. And it could take a while to look through the different plugins and see how powerful Bubble really is. Um, and there's a lot, there's a lot of plugins. And you can go through them if you like, or we can continue here. By making this, I think 15 with 15 should be good enough, and a height of 15 as well to keep it square. And then we're going to go to icon color and give it the light color. Choose an icon and click the down arrow. Perfect. Let's go ahead and make sure that this is. Oh no, it's got to be a bit wider. I think. What is this at now? 22. Got to be 22 for those of you who watch Mad TV. And it's at 17 pixels, and we had picked. 15, I believe. If I'm not from now, we had picked 20, 17. So let's go to 20. Yeah, gotta be 22. I'm not having so much trouble. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and leave that there for now. You can set it up pixel perfect if you like, center it vertically. And now we have a button, and this button will actually highlight this way. Oh, it's very wide. We forgot to click fixed width. So now that you have your button, you can actually go ahead and um, put the menu that will drop down. And what we're going to use is a group focus. And group focus actually anchors to an element. And the reference element will be the group that we've just created. And then we have to add an offset left of, let's say, I think it's minus 140. If the width is 250, yep. So it always will align to this group with an offset of 140 to the left and top of zero. So it will always, wherever this group is on your screen, this group will appear directly below it. Now it's not going to show right away. Uh, we're gonna give it a flat color that is very close to white, just a little bit blue. And we're gonna go ahead and put in an element inside of it that is a group. And we're going to type in, hey, Oops. Let's go ahead and make sure that this is good. And then let's adjust the height to be 40, which is two thirds of 60. So it'll look good. And let's give it a deep blue color. And then let's put in some text and let's write, hey, stranger. That's you, by the way, because you're not subscribed. That's right, I'm throwing shade. Let's remove this style and let's go to 
Fafa, or even better, this color right here. And let's make a bold. And now you'll notice, uh, center vertically, and now we need to actually show this group when we click on this group. And the way we did that last time was to go to Start Edit Workflow. And then you can go Element Actions, Show, or Animate. Show will just show it with no animation. And Animate, there's a number of animations that will show it. Um, excuse me. Uh, there you go. There's a number of animations that will show it, like Slide. Slider's always a good one. Slide down. Let's go slide down in. And let's go custom duration of 250 milliseconds and see what that looks like. And the thing that's nice about group focus is that you can show it using a button. And then anytime you click away from it, um, it'll actually disappear by itself. And that's the kind of UX that we look for. Um, and by UX, I mean user experience. Next, we want to add some styling here and some options in the menu that navigate. So let's say we wanted to recreate option one and option two. We can manually put them in with uh, a group here and we could say, blah, blah, this is option one. Actually, let's do it with right click here, copy with workflows and let's click here and paste with workflows. And here's option one. And option one will actually work directly from inside this menu. And you can create everything manually like that. Here's option one. Um, next, next thing we want to try is to be able to put different options and keep them different for every user that logs in. So we're going to um, create a repeating group, which basically loads a number of different repeated things, like a list of dates or a list of users. What it'll do is it'll look for a list, and then it'll return every instance of that list and create groups for you so that you don't have to create them manually. So it's a really, really useful tool, very powerful, and we're only just gonna scratch the surface of what it does today. So let's go ahead and drag this out, and we're gonna give this a height of 40, same as the um, group above it, just for consistency. And then we're going to close this, this repeating group around it. Now this group, uh, we're going to make it a flat color that is the same one as this one, I think. Let's go ahead and put that there. And then let's go conditional on hover when this group is hovered. Let's go to background color of uh, a little bit darker. Okay. And then we're going to go put in some text. And this text will be the actual name. Let's start this vertically and let's double click it and go to conditional when its parent group, which is I, is hovered. Then we're going to change the font color to be. The darkest of blues and we're going to keep it one shade of blue off the darkest perfect we're also going to make it no we're not going to make it bold now we have to tell bubble what we're going to put in here and that all happens in the data tab in the data tab you create an entire database that your app will use for all intents and purposes so let's go to ooh, i already have these oh i agree okay so let's go for a new type called menu options. And in menu options, we're going to be able to create a new field called name and field type is text. And we're gonna have a field called index. And we're gonna have this field type as a number. And we're going to have, a, mm, we're gonna leave it that way for now. And let's go to app data and let's go to all menu options and let's add two menu options. Let's add index of one, name of option one. And let's do the same thing again, but name option two and index of two. And let's create that. Let's go to design. And now we can actually load them into our repeating group. So click here, that'll be the group, select its first parent, and that'll be the repeating group. And the repeating group, we're gonna go and look for, do a search for menu options. So now when the page loads, it's actually going to look through your entire database and try to find menu options and then load them in one for each cell of your repeating. You may need to play around with this a little bit more than what I'm explaining to you, but it's actually not as complex as you think and it's very, very powerful. So we're going to change this to a full list and we're going to actually let them, let Bubble load the entire, uh, the entire set of menu options, which should be two when I click on here. Here they are, edit me, edit me. 
Next, we're going to say, we can't write edit me, we have to write the name that we selected. So we're gonna click on here, and this type of content is a menu option. We want it to pass it up to the next group and then up to this text. So clicking here, we can actually say type of content, menu options, current cells, menu options is the data source. Now this group knows which menu option is in the cell. And now this text can actually be parent groups, menu options, name. And you're going to notice you can pass any type of information like that hierarchically in bubble. I don't know if this is making a lot of sense to you, but now we have option one and option two. And this is where you start saving a lot of time. Remember when we did option one and how long it took us to pass information from option one and option two? Well, here we can say start edit workflow and we could say navigation, go to page, destination index, send more parameters, send P is what we were sending. And P can be current cells, menu options, index. So when we click on the first option, it's going to pass one. And when we click on the second option, it's going to pass two. Here's one and you'll notice everything that we built still works. It actually passes one. And let's go option two, and it still works. Now from a UI perspective, uh, it's not very nice because it stays there, so we're just gonna actually hide it first. Hide, group focus, uh, focus, and we're gonna hide it, and then we're going to navigate. And everything should work according to plan. There you go. So now you can pass any type of parameters on any number of options. Uh, what I would do also is go into your da data tab and data types. I can actually add an icon here and field type will be an image and I will click create. And then in my different options, I can actually upload different icons. I don't know what I have readily available. Save. So now it's been modified. Let's go to option two and let's upload, I don't know, this one here. It might be weird colors. So now I've loaded two images and I can actually, just like I passed up the name, I can pass up the icon as well through the groups. So now I can click here and say dynamic image, dynamic data, and I can say parent groups, menu options, icon. And that should actually load right out of the box. It's not, uh... there it is option one and option two. And I can say when this group is hovered, change this font color, change this icon color or whatever. But now you basically have the makings of a menu. No problem, it looks good. And uh, you're able to add as many options as you want. And you're also able to build in your navigation the same way that you've already learned how to do it. So that's mostly done for navigation in your nav bar. And we're actually going to next uh, tutorial look at optimizing it for mobile because this is built very wide it's built for desktop tablets and that kind of thing and we're actually just going to touch a little bit on responsive settings for your nav bar in the next tutorial so we'll see you there